with uh, with that, I'm going to I'm going to introduce our first speaker, uh, who is our our keynote presenter. Uh, let me. I'm going to cut that for a moment. So I'm just going to bring uh, Sukan on. I'm very pleased to to have uh, Sukan present the keynote uh, here at API Days uh, Jakarta. Welcome, Sukan. Oh, thank you very much, John. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, why don't you bring on your screen while while I introduce you? So. Sukan is a, a very experienced uh, technology entrepreneur. Uh, he's worked across um, uh, the, the US as well as Indonesia. He's very uh, well um, uh, connected within the Southeast Asia uh, technology scene. And um, so he's, he's very well qualified to, to give his keynote on the convergence of e-commerce and payments in Southeast Asia. All right. So, am I all set? You you are all set. I'm going to lead you to it now. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, I'm glad that you guys take the time to um, be together here to learn from each other. Uh, I'm really impressed with the way John runs the uh, conferences worldwide, as well as the contents, the speaker. Uh, and uh, I'm really sure you're going to learn a lot. So in this particular session, the next 23 minutes or so, uh, we're going to share with you the convergence of e-commerce and payments in Southeast Asia. And some of you might have said, uh, this is so obvious already. Uh, I can buy things uh, online and with a lot of convenience. But uh, let's walk through memory lane what uh, has happened, uh, how long it took, things to happen, and what is waiting around the corner for us. So what we're going to cover here is a quick review of e-commerce, uh, not just in Indonesia, Southeast Asia, but also uh, overall trends, because uh, we can learn a lot from what happened elsewhere, and maybe we can accelerate the process of what happened elsewhere uh, to happen here. So as an anecdotal example, uh, in year 2000, the uh, second uh, startup uh, that was funded by uh, Greylock was um, going into five countries in Asia. So headquarters was in Silicon Valley. We expanded to Hong Kong, Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, and China, and was uh, indirect competitive to a small company at that time called Alibaba. And we were really sure that China was going to explode but uh, we were way too early. So we were hoping that the waves from US would be rather quickly be followed by waves in Southeast Asia or Asia in general. Uh, so at that time, the speed was not uh, fast enough, but uh, recently there's a lot of things that happened. The first thing is uh, since 2007, 2008, China had caught up amazingly fast and actually exceeded some aspects of US. Indonesia has started uh, in 2014 uh, with e-commerce explosion, uh, with the fact that uh, Tokopedia had been funded by one of the most prominent investors, uh, Sequoia. So um, then the rest is history. So there are a lot of things that uh, have been happening elsewhere uh, that we can adopt and accelerate and compress the uh, adoption speed. Uh, and at the same time, we may be able to uh, skip some of the unnecessary steps to accelerate the process. So we're going to talk about how payments have uh, 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 been uh, growing as well as how we can expand the um, e-commerce to expand specifically in Southeast Asia, because in Southeast Asia, there are some payment challenges that doesn't exist uh, elsewhere. And we're going to talk about how we get ready for the future. So let's take a look at the comparison between US, China, in India, and uh, Southeast Asia. For example, if we were looking at the marketplaces, uh, in US, there's, uh, the big ones are Amazon, Walmart, eBay, and of course, uh, there are countless like uh, the big one 
Wayfair, specifically selling furniture, and they are multi-billion dollar companies already. In China, we have Alibaba, Taobao, and uh, numerous ones, but practically these two are the very dominant players, and they have uh, automated a lot of things. Uh, they have expanded this the cover and um, also uh, created uh, proxy fights in Southeast Asia, especially Indonesia being the fourth largest country in the world. Um, and then in India, there's uh, Amazon, uh, and then Amazon and Walmart also collaborated to build Flipkart. So we can see that the pattern is going to happen more. Amazon had already invested 5 billion. And in, in Southeast Asia, specifically Indonesia, um, obviously there's uh, Tokopedia, Shopee, Blibli, Lazada, and Shopee being extremely amazing. In the three years since it went IPO, the price had gone up eight times. So uh, Indonesia certainly is a very, very attractive country to uh, for for uh, marketplaces to expand uh, google etc uh, had predicted that by 2025 uh, it would be 4x the current gtv gmv uh, shopee is going to uh, with now being profitable will expand more aggressively Libli, uh privately owned by one of the wealthiest family in indonesia is also not going to back down lazada com continues uh, and if we were to look at from the perspective of the sellers, marketplace is a very convenient place to sell because um, without doing anything much, you can post your products and get sellers without having to do digital marketing and uh, you can acquire sellers, uh, buyers. And payments is handled uh, you know, conveniently in the, in the case of Tokopedia and, and the other guys. There are so many ways to accept payments from the very many inbound uh, approaches of, of paying the, the sellers. Now, if you look at the US, the big ones for website builders are Shopify and Big Commerce. Again, multiple billion uh, valuation. Uh, big Commerce just went public a couple of weeks ago. Very successful one. And in China, uh, it's not clear outside of Alibaba and Taobao how successful the uh, website builders. India, there are some players as well. Uh, but in uh, Southeast Asia, Shopify expanding uh, quite aggressively, surplus specifically in Indonesia. Uh, everybody has uh, pluses and minuses. And uh, there are other players that I uh, cannot list here. There are way too many. But from the seller's perspective, marketplace is a convenient place, but uh, and also, you know, in terms of getting customers and also handling the payment, if they want to build their own website because they're afraid of not being able to have a intimate relationship with their customers, and this problem happens even in Amazon, right? If I were a seller on Amazon, I cannot have the contact info, nor can I contact my buyers directly, which is an inconvenience because even though I didn't pay for the customer acquisition, I would love to be able to uh, make special offers or connect to my um, buyers. And thereby, sometimes the sellers would actually like to build their own website, build, integrate their own payment system uh, in order to connect to their buyers. So there's a pro and con for the uh, selling marketplace on mar uh, or website. Now, if you're a principal, which is a, a factory, now the the trend is to go with uh, direct to consumer, right? So uh, again, that there's a cost of customer uh, customer acquisition cost. Uh, another way is through social media. Uh, starting a few years ago, um, Indonesian uh, sellers have uh, sold more items on their Facebook pages compared to say even in the US, right? So uh, Indonesians are very, um, resourceful in looking at opportunities, and they see that Facebook is, was a good way to sell. Now in US, it's, uh, it's getting there. Um, so there's a lot of traffic um, region, redirection from social media channels, especially Instagram, uh, some cases from the other so social media channel going to, for example, their um, individually built Shopify platform. In China, there are other things, but I'm not going to focus on that. Same thing in India, but in Indonesia, there are some regular 
regulatory uh, constraints that we have to deal with uh, in terms of uh, e-commerce. And also be careful about the fraud because uh, in some cases people sell items, accept the payments and uh, actually disappear. So those are the kind of things that happen in the landscape of e-commerce. Now moving on to the payment side, if we were to look at the methods in US, the credit cards, the predominant ways of uh, accepting payments. 85% uh, approximately of the US population have credit cards. Even if you're in college, have no income, you get credit cards, right? So it's uh, extending credit is a way of life. And that's why there's uh, credit agencies uh, nationwide, uh, TransUnion Experian, uh, TransUnion, that specialize in providing services in this ecosystem. And that's why credit card thrives. In fact, if you keep on paying by cash, you would be at a disadvantage when you wanna buy a car on installment loans or a house on, uh, on mortgages. Now in China, it started with cash and then going to cashless, as you know. In India, cash again with the expansion of uh, Paytm and UPI, now it's becoming common uh, to go through cashless. Now in Southeast Asia, a lot of cash transactions still happen. Um, in Indonesia, in, in fact, uh, it's pretty steady that seven out of 10 uh, payments happen through bank transfers, despite of all these conveniences. And of course, recently there's e-wallet uh, that we will discuss uh, soon here. Now, if we were to talk about the, just the inside the country, in-country transactions, in US, there are quite a few big players like Stripe, Square, again, multi-billion dollar company, Samsung Pay, Google Pay, Apple Pay, Facebook Pay. And now, if we were to look, compare Samsung Pay, Google Pay, and Apple Pay, a couple of years ago, I, I noticed that Samsung Pay uh, works be work better in, say, San Francisco than, say, Google Pay and Apple Pay. I'm sure by now it's already different. Facebook Pay uh, also uh, had extended because of in India, uh, WhatsApp, uh, pay is, is expanding there, and in 86 August, I was actually uh, uh, just about to launch uh, uh, essentially a, a WeChat-like uh, system with a QR code reader um, using WhatsApp, right? So um, in terms of the uh, pay here, the challenges that these guys face is, Indonesia has a certain regulatory constraint disallowing foreign entities to conduct transactions in Indonesia. There are some exceptions and we'll get to it if we have the time. For example, here, Alipay WePay dominates in China. Alipay expanded dramatically after they adopted the uh, mutual funds investment. Uh, Alipay also got accepted in US uh, and in Bali. India, obviously, Paytm. Now, in Southeast Asia, uh, OVO, GoPay, Dana, ShopeePay, uh, of course, there's Link Aja also, uh, are the dominant uh, wallet uh, player, and it works within the country. Now, um, OVO, GrabPay is trying to do cross-country uh, and cross-border. So if we look at cross-border in US and uh, the rest of the world, PayPal has more uh, presence more in more than 127 countries with its convenient uh, but uh, very simple uh, UI UX, just like my slides. Authorize.net also quite worldwide. Um, you can extend uh, and sell items and extend uh, receive payments across the world by just uh, providing a authorize.net as a payment mechanism. Uh, China, obviously, Alipay, WePay. Um, is expanding their wings. Um, India, uh, there are quite a bit of players in there. Uh, some of them actually took a lot of time just for the onboarding. Uh, one of the big dogs, um, for example, could take up to one month, right? But they're a big dog. They're very, very big. Uh, let's start with the CC, right? Now, in uh, Southeast Asia, the cross-border hasn't really worked well. I mean, go, uh, GrabPay uh, has been trying to, has been in the process to make it uh, cross-country. Um, but uh, certainly with the on onslaught of uh, cross-border commerce, 
it's becoming more and more interesting to be able to handle payments across. Now, if you're looking at an example, a very successful example would be Alibaba, where um, initially, uh, if I were to buy an item uh, using and paying using Alipay, I must have a China uh, a bank account in China. So that's very impractical, uh, but things have changed in the last few years. So I could really buy off Alibaba using uh, different techniques of payments. And in the case of Southeast Asia, uh, the, in the last few years, with the uh, availability of a lot of uh, payment mechanism and the open API uh, to integrate to wallets, et cetera, it becomes very convenient for buyers to conduct transactions uh, on e-commerce platform, on websites, and also uh, recently becoming more convenient on social media channels such as Instagram. Now, the downside of Instagram obviously is, uh, you know, there's no external link. You can't really do ex uh, add external link to your store or your catalog uh, quite conveniently. There's only the bio link that you can uh, take advantage of. So then uh, an opportunity is to um, have a platform that actually enables the buyers to click on the bio link and then be able to access catalogs, uh, payment page, and so on and so forth. Now, in Southeast Asia, as uh, mentioned earlier, the regulatory constraints could be very demanding. As an example, in order to um, uh, onboard a seller on a platform, in, in PayPal is extremely simple, and it can be done online. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but in some cases, if we were to do that uh, in Indonesia, you will have to submit certain documents that you may not own, especially if you're not an individual seller, but you are a small business seller, right? So in some cases, people are reluctant to give up those documents as well when, uh, whenever possible for various reasons. So the regulatory constraints, in fact, uh, is more demanding than say in in us that's why the expansion in us uh, in general started very freely but recently in asia uh, because of uh, growth hacking techniques uh, payments are expanding no matter what now the other part is the habits and mindsets um, specifically in indonesia uh, we are uh, getting more interested in cod cash on delivery uh, I want to see the items first, uh, if I were a buyer, before I con uh, con confirm my payment. Uh, this, this happens for a few reasons. Number one, maybe the picture doesn't represent the item. Uh, maybe the, uh, there's some problem in terms of delivery. So I ordered a, um, maybe a, uh, a battery bank and I received a rice cooker, things like that. So I don't want to pay unless um, I see the item first. I open the item, it's the item I want, and I confirm the payment. So this, the COD is becoming interesting. Now, uh, the challenge is Indonesia is comprised of 17,000 islands. And so when, when you need to do COD on the same island, it's still doable, but when you want to do it across different islands, even across the five big islands, this becomes quite, uh, expensive. So those are the kind of challenges outside of payment that uh, an e-commerce player or website owner or in, uh, social media seller have to be taken care of. And handling exceptions, returns, refunds, uh, deviations, and so on and so forth. And don't be surprised if you are a buyer of an item, for example, in the marketplace, and after you pay, the seller would ask you to cancel the payment and buy at another store because there could be promotion in the other store where the seller don't have to pay for a success fee to the uh, marketplace. So there are things like that that happens um, uh, even to squeeze uh, a few dollars. Now, in terms of the payment gateway, uh, there are several um, payment gateways in Indonesia and with the onslaught of 
uh, so many uh, in social commerce where it, it takes a lot of effort to do point-to-point -point integration to, uh, for example, do bank transfer to multiple banks. It is a lot more convenient uh, for the sellers to uh, pay for additional fee and let a payment gateway handle the uh, a multitude of incoming payment uh, choices plus the other um, uh, choices of uh, you know maybe the seller has multiple accounts in multiple uh, channels right so Zendit would be one of the uh, payment gateway providers it's a Y Combinator uh, graduate do it Pool is used by a lot of the fintech peer-to-peer -peer lending um, now keep in mind the, the benefit of payment gateway is that one integration, if you're a platform, one integration with this payment gateway through their API would enable you to access multiple um, uh, sources of payment and it reduces the amount of work, at least initially, right, at, the, at the cost of additional fees. Um, now, of course, the weakest link, uh, the, the weak part of the link is the, the weakest uh, chain itself, right? So if the payment gateway, if the bank has a, uh, availability of only 20 hours a day, then the payment gateway at best could be available only 20 hours a day. Midtrans used to be called Veritrans a uh, few years, years ago, and it, they have become uh, Midtrans after acquired by uh, Gojek. Ovo um, was uh, founded by Lipo Group and then uh, finally acquired um, by Greg. GoPay um, is part of a Gojek. So there are certain things, for example, Mitrans specifically focus on GoPay, but not OVO and vice versa. So there are some mapping that doesn't really uh, provide every single point for a uh, certain reason, business reason. Shopee Pay has been aggressive uh, because they've been profitable recently. Doku is also a long-term player. And some of these guys actually provide connectivity to a very convenient uh, place to pay, which is the convenience store like Indomaret, Alphamaret. But again, the devil is always in the detail where if you want to integrate with Indomaret, Alphamaret, then you need to pay attention to you know, uh, the regulation. Uh, and of course, there are other ones like FastPay. Now, closing down to the last uh, slide here, the question before you, either as a seller or as a platform owner, um, which payment gateway would you choose? So these are some of the consideration. Who will do the work, right? And behavior of the payment page that you want versus the budget that you are able to um, handle. Who's paying for the cost? If you are handling, uh, 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 you know, if a SaaS versus a uh, paper transaction. Uh, which is usually about 3% plus uh, some incidentals. What is the overall integration of the payment page, especially when with the uh, onslaught of the social media uh, that you want to have? Now, the future is uh, to pay attention to, this is the last line, is how do you ensure that customers would feel comfortable with the onboarding process? This particular case customer would be the seller. Because in some cases, uh, as I mentioned, there's one company in India, a big, big player, uh, took one month because a lot of the um, uh, manual processing. Can you actually do this online without uh, breaking any regulatory constraints? What kind of fees, uh, maturity of the network, you know, stability, availability, the UX, the document for uh, developers, the support, you know, what kind of time frame uh, would you support uh, the integration effort? Now, of course, there's also the concept of super app of payment, which is how many points can you connect? Banks, convenience stores, wallet, and uh, there's an ATM Bersama, which is a, uh, a hub for multiple ATMs from multiple banks. And uh, there's one startup I'm helping called Zens, Z-E-N-D-S, uh, focusing on uh, mapping all this inbound to multiple outbound. So in summary, when we look at the convergence of e-commerce and payments in Indonesia, there's some similarity with uh, US specifically being the leading edge uh, of a couple of decades ago, uh, all the way uh, to the payment as well. 
and we actually can compress the you know the growth process for the e-commerce as well as the payment and the integration and the choices and we skip some of the things that are not needed because in asia uh, especially in indonesia the adoption of credit card is very low it's probably about five percent so there needs to be another way to handle payments that is not heavily dependent on credit cards like in the us so all in all uh, there's so much exciting things uh, waiting around the corner for us uh, providing additional stability, availability, connectivity, um, and um, a quick integration for sellers who want to sell not only on the, on the marketplace, not only building their website, but especially on social media, which is still expanding heavily. So I hope you uh, learned a couple of things uh, from this and uh, please do uh, hang around uh, for the whole day because there's a lot of things to learn from each of the speakers, very competent speaker. The next speaker will share something very, very exciting about integration with banking and um, how you can access your bank account, uh, in access your data from multiple bank accounts. That is an exciting talk that's waiting in just a couple of minutes. Thanks very much, Mr. Right. Khan, for, for, uh, for those insights. Um, and actually, we had we did have a question um, about uh, about fraud, online fraud. Um, but I, um, rather than address it now, I'd, I'd like to uh, um, direct people to a couple of sessions that we have on the technical stage uh, after after the break, uh, where we'll learn about uh, national identity in in Indonesia and biometrics, and also about. Uh, Different ways of, of of knowing more, ver verifying uh, the, the identity of uh, of your customers. So uh, thanks very much, Sikhan, and um, uh, really really appreciate that uh, that overview of Southeast Asia and uh, and how uh, how e-commerce and, and payments are, are converging. Thanks very much. You're welcome, Jeff. It's a pleasure.